Welcome back to this next video in the series on building an NPM package. In the first one, we built a simple package that was a hello world type thing and learned how to create an NPM account and publish directly from there. In the second video, we started building a more production ready package. And in this one, we're going to finish all of that off with some security checks for that production ready package and version management and publishing for it. So if you missed any of that previously, all the links to those videos will be in the description below and part of a playlist. But for this one, let's jump right into it. So in the last video, we left off on trying out and testing, consuming the package in a sample project. Now what we're up to is adding in security checks. And the way we can do that is by using Sneak. If you're not already familiar with Sneak, you can head on over to the website, snyk.io, sneak.io to find out more. But really quick, an overview for you is Sneak is a developer security platform that offers various products and services to help developers and security practitioners. And the way we're going to utilize it for the purposes of this NPM package is by having it do security checks in our pipeline for us. All right, so one of the first things you're going to need to do to get started with Sneak is sign up for an account. If you head on over to sneak.io, snyk.io, and you click on the sign up button, you'll be brought to this screen. I personally like to use just my GitHub account. It's a quick and fast way to do it, but you can also use Google or Bitbucket or Azure or even your company's single sign-on solution. And what's also great is it's all free. You can use the free tier. I personally use the free tier for all my personal projects. You can use it for your projects as well. You can sign up for free today. Once you have an account, you're gonna to wanna to get a Sneak API token. And the quickest way you can go about getting that is by going to app.sneak.io slash account like you see here, or you can navigate via the menu to get to your account settings view like this. Once you're on this page, you're gonna see the auth token field and you're gonna have the key right here. I'm not gonna to click to show that right now, but you can do that so you can get it, copy it and save it to a safe place because we're gonna need it later. Now what you need to do is head on over to your GitHub repository and click on the settings button in the top right hand corner there. Then you're going to scroll down on the left hand side and go to secrets and variables. Click on actions and we're going to add in a new repository secret. Now what's important here is the name that you use for the key. Keep that in mind because we're going to need that later on to add to our GitHub action in our pipeline. So we're going to call it sneak underscore token and then you paste in the secret value here and then click on add secret. I'm gonna do that now off camera. After you click add secret, you should see your view like this, repository secrets, and then the token name that you have here, which is sneak token. Now what we wanna do is in our actions, create a new workflow, set up a workflow yourself. We're gonna call it sneak this time. Then what I'm gonna do is copy the GitHub action code, the YAML code, that utilizes the sneak GitHub actions that will run the sneak tool set against our project for us. So let's step through what's happening. We're naming the overall workflow sneak security check. It gets triggered whenever there's a push or a pull request. And the job that runs is the security job, which runs in Ubuntu latest using these steps. So first it checks out the main branch, and then it's going to run the sneak actions based on node master with the environment variable sneak token, which is the name we used in the secrets key that we added, right? And we're going to set its value to the actual token that's saved as a secret within GitHub Actions. And the way we could get that value is by using this syntax, dollar sign, double curly braces. And we're going to say secrets dot and the name of the secret that we just stored before and then close those curly braces like that. So I'm going to save this, commit these changes, and that should be all set now. Once that's all set, we can verify that this is all running and working by going to the actions view on the repository and check out the workflow running. So when we look at this job that checked for vulnerabilities, we can see that Sneak found there are no vulnerable paths, which is great. But let's say my project was more complex and I had open source dependencies. Well, Sneak open source would check my open source dependencies to see if I'm relying on any packages that have vulnerabilities in them based on the versions that I'm using. In addition to that, it can check my code with sneak code to see if I introduce any vulnerabilities or people on my team introduce vulnerabilities part of this commit that triggered this job to run and let us know about it and block the build from continuing. And that is how you get set up to do security checks using sneaks GitHub actions. All right, next up for us to get this package production ready is to set up version management and publishing of the package. All right, so if you're not familiar with semantic version, here's a really quick breakdown. There are three parts to the version number. The first part, which is called the major part, is the first number. Then that's separated by a period. And you get to the second number, which is the minor version of the package. And then separated by a period as well is the patch version of it. And the idea behind that is if you have major changes in your package, it means that there's likely going to be breaking changes so that anybody using the previous version is going to have to do some more testing and 
checks and trying that out before jumping to that version because it could break their project as well. When it comes to minor and patch, that's expected to not have as big of an impact. For instance, patch versions should really not change much other than addressing bug fixes or security issues that you might have. And then minor version changes is if you change things like APIs, you add APIs or functionality into your package, but you don't change existing functionality. And that is a really quick rough overview of semantic versioning. And we want to follow that. And one way we can simplify doing that instead of having to do it manually with our package is using a tool called semantic release. Let me show you how to get set up with that. All right, so to get started with semantic release, we're going to add it as a dev dependency to our project. So in your terminal, you're going to run npm i for install hyphen capital D for dev dependencies, semantic hyphen release. All right, once that's done, I'm going to clear my screen and I'm going to run npx now so that I run this as an executable. We're going to say semantic release hyphen CLI and the setup command for that. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to use the CLI version of this tool. We're going to say OK to proceed. Yes, so that we can step through setting up semantic release for this project. All right. So the first question we are given is, is the GitHub repository private? Yes or no. In this case, this one is. So we're going to say yes. What is my NPM registry I want to use? We're going to use the public registry. What is your NPM username? So in the first video of this series, you should have created an NPM account. If you haven't, go ahead and check back on that one. Use the link there to create an NPM account. So I'm going to set up with mine though right now. And we need to get the password. So I'm going to enter that in off camera really quick. Then after that, if you have two-factor authentication set up, which I recommend you do, and I did call that out in the first video, you're going to need to enter in the code for that. So I'm going to do that next. All right, once you enter in your NPM two-factor authentication code, you're going to be prompted to get your GitHub personal access token. And you're going to do so by going to the following URL. So let's head on over to the browser and see how that goes now. Once you go to that link and you sign into your GitHub account, if you're not already signed in, you're going to give your personal access token a note or name. So I'm going to say, you know, my semantic release PAT personal access token for my NPM package or something like that. Give it an expiration of your choosing. I'm gonna choose seven days. It's the shortest for now for the purposes of this video. And then when it comes to scopes, you're gonna uncheck repo and you're gonna choose just public repo. Then you scroll down and you click on generate token. When you do that, it's going to change the view in the page and give you the value of your GitHub personal access token. And you're gonna copy that value, save it somewhere safe for the time being. And then we're gonna go back into the terminal in VS Code or wherever you're using your terminal and we're gonna paste it in there. I'm going to go do that off camera. I'm going to get the value and I'm going to paste it in into the terminal. So you paste it into the terminal, hit enter, and then you're going to use your arrow keys to select up and down. In this case, I'm going to choose GitHub Actions. But for you, if you're using a different service or continuous integration pipeline tool like Travis CI or Circle CI, you can choose those as well. So I have to type it in because of my terminal. I hit enter and it will choose GitHub Actions for me. And we'll wait for that to go through the process of setting that up with that GitHub Access token. Okay, once you do that, you have successfully set up semantic release. And we're going to go to the next step, which is getting an NPM access token or an automation type token that we need for publishing our package to the NPM registry. So for that, you're going to go to a specific URL based on your NPM username account. So in my case, it's going to be Clark IO. In your case, it's going to be whatever your username is for NPM. So let's head on over to the browser to get started with that. All right, so you can go to that URL directly by replacing it with your username or while you're logged into npmjs.com, you can click on your profile icon here and go down to access tokens to arrive at this page. So now what you wanna do is you wanna click on generate new token. And in this case, we're gonna choose classic token because it's the only one that allows us to create an, what's called an automation token. So if you have two-factor authentication turned on for your account and you use a general granular access token type of thing, you're going to be prompted in your pipeline to enter in your two-factor code, which your CI pipeline is not going to have access to. So right now, the only one that I know of at the time of this recording that allows us to create an automation token is the classic token. So we're going to choose that. We're going to give it a name, publish modern NPM package demo. I'm going to say for this case, and I'm going to choose the automation option. And then I'm going to click on generate token. I'm going to do that off camera because it's going to create the token value that I'm going to save. You're going to copy that, save it to a safe place because then we're going to use it later on. All right. Once you have that saved, head on over to your repository up in GitHub and you're going to click on settings and then you're going to choose. You're going to scroll down on the left hand side and we're going to go to secrets. We're going to say actions 
Once you're in here, you're going to go down to repository secret, click on new repository secret, give it a name of caps lock NPM, all caps NPM, and then token. And then you're going to paste in the value of your NPM token here and click add secret. All right, head back over to your editor of choice, in this case, VS Code for me, and we're gonna edit the package JSON file so that the publish config has access. Instead of restricted, we're gonna say this is public. And then we're also gonna create a release branches so that semantic release knows what to do. We're gonna use the main branch to release from. After that, we're gonna test out semantic release now. All right, with all of that set, our next step is to do a dry run using the semantic release tool to make sure that everything will go through smoothly when it's up in the pipeline and running there. So we're gonna run a command in the command line for your terminal and provide the NPM token and GitHub access token that we created earlier directly in the command here. What that looks like is NPM token equals, and then your value, you paste that in there, then GH underscore token equals the value, and then the command we're gonna run, which is npx, and we're gonna run the semantic hyphen release, and then we're gonna pass in the dry run flag, hyphen hyphen dry hyphen run. So obviously it's not gonna work for me because I didn't put in the actual values here, but when you run it, that's when you're gonna see and make sure that everything that semantic release steps through all passes with the little green check mark. So I'm gonna go do that off camera and then you'll, I'll show you the end results of what that looks like. All right, so I went and did that with my actual token values and we could see the output of semantic release running using that information. So we're running version 24.2.1. It loaded the plugin verify conditions. All these are green check marks that all the steps that it would go through to generate release notes or things like that, where it's gonna prepare and publish. It's gonna add channel, which is your NPM and GitHub access stuff or plugins rather for that. And then a run automated release from branch in dry run mode. So it's not gonna do that. It's skipping it. Allowed to push to the Git repository based on the token that it has. And then it's doing verifying conditions, verify authentication for the registry, NPM registry using your NPM account and token. Then it's going to verify your GitHub authentication. All that went through fine. A little informational logs that are going through here and so forth. Analyzing commits and whether or not it should update and trigger a release based on what those commits were. And then it completes that step. And then it says, in this case, there are no relevant changes. So no new version is going to be released. So there you go. You're all set up at this point with semantic release to automatically generate the next proper version based on what you commit into the NPM package. All right, so now that we verified all that and everything looks good, we need to set up our GitHub repository to have a new workflow or GitHub action that will handle doing this for us automatically when changes are made to the repository on the main branch. So let's head on over to GitHub to set that up on the repository. All right, when you're back over on your repository, you're gonna click on actions. You should see your previous actions that you made like the sneak security check and the tests actions. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on new workflow. We're gonna set up a workflow ourselves. We're going to give it a name of release.yml and then I'm going to paste in what is from the blog post there and we'll talk through what exactly is happening. So we give it a name of release. It's going to be dependent upon these other workflows, sneak security check and the tests one, which we saw earlier. Just to double check on that, we'll open up a new tab and go there. We got sneak security check. You got to make sure the names match and then tests. Okay. Go back, sneak security check and test. Right. And branch is going to be main and then we have types is complete and what that's saying is when these workflows complete then it'll run this workflow and in this workflow we have a job that is called release it runs on ubuntu latest operating system and here are the steps that it's going to do it's going to check out we're going to update this to be the latest version which is going to be version four so we check out the latest changes we're going to set up node using the setup node action version four and we got to install dependencies using npm ci and then we're going to do a release and this is where we need to add in the github token as an environment variable here which is being pulled from the repository secrets that we saw earlier github underscore token and then npm underscore token and we're going to run the command npx semantic release which was what we did before all right once we have all that in there we are going to click on commit changes we'll commit it directly to the main branch and select commit changes after that, we can check to see if that release workflow runs, which it looks like it is running. For some reason, there's two, but it's likely going to fail because we don't have everything. Our local changes haven't been pushed up to the main branch yet. And we could see, yes, it did indeed fail. So one thing that's different from the blog post in terms of how the release workflow is defined in this YAML file, YML file, is we need to add in permissions contents right. 
This is something that's changed since the creation of the blog post to now this point in time. So we need to add that so that it gives this workflow access and the execution of the actions within it access to make changes to the repository because it's going to tag the latest release with the version that was calculated with semantic release. So it needs to have access and the permissions in order to write those changes in the repository. So add this in here. You can do it at the top level that will allow it to be for all jobs, or you can put it in the specific job, which is the release one if you'd like, but we only have the one job here. So it doesn't really make a difference where we put it in this regard right now. So make sure we update that. I'm going to update it in the blog post as well for this, but you need to update that. It's a slight change from what's in the blog post at the current time of recording this video. So once we make those changes and commit them, if I go back over, which I did this off camera, we'll see that the release did indeed pass. And if we look at the release job here itself, here's all the semantic release steps that it went through. It's allowed to push the Git repository, which we were getting an error before because we didn't have that permission set. And it found nine commits since late last release. It analyzed those commits. And then it made a decision on what it should do. There are no relevant changes. So new new version is released here in this case. So there we have it for now. So now with all of this in place, what you need to do moving forward is use what's called conventional commits. That's what semantic release is based off of. And it uses that to determine whether there are relevant changes and whether or not it should have a new version released for your package. The way you learn more about conventional commits is by going to their website. The link to that is in the blog post, but also will be shared in the description below. And you can find out via a quick summary here. Essentially, you use conventions. The commit messages you use help define what version changes need to be made. And semantic release will pick up on that using those conventions and make the proper changes to the version to be able to publish it in that way. So if you make a fix, you prefix it with fix colon and then some information that you want to add there that's specific to that. If you add a new feature, you do feature colon. If you add a breaking change, you can set it up like that. All of these things will help signal to semantic release when you commit those changes up to your repository in GitHub and the pipeline starts working, that release action starts working. You'll be able to have semantic release automatically update the version in the way based on these commit messages that you use here. And that's what helps automate and keep things efficient. And it gets your package all set for production. With all that said and done, we're pretty much done with what we need to do to have a modern production ready NPM package that we can release on the NPM registry for others to use and get benefit out of. Now, there's one thing to note here though, is while it is great that we have sneak in the pipeline to do those security checks, when you are making commits in between pushes to that repository, you may be introducing vulnerabilities at that point in time too. And you might not know about it until you push it up to the repository and the pipeline runs with the security check from Sneak. So you can get continuous monitoring though by hooking up your GitHub repository directly to Sneak. Let me show you really quick from the blog post how you can do that. It's simple and straightforward. So at the very end of the blog post, you'll see this section that's called continuous security monitoring with Sneak via GitHub. And what you can do is there are two products from Sneak which are particularly helpful for ensuring security of your NPM package code and its dependencies. So you have Sneak code and you have Sneak open source. Sneak code is analyzing the code that you write for vulnerabilities in it. And then Sneak open source is analyzing the dependencies that you have if there are any known vulnerabilities that have been reported in those to alert you to and any fixes that might be available to address those. So you sign up for your free Sneak account over at sneak.io, S-N-Y-K.io. You click on the add project button and choose GitHub. You go and find your repository for that one that you want to add here. In this case, it's going to be your modern NPM package or well, in the example, I'm using the simple one. And then once it's been imported into your sneak account, sneak will monitor there from the sneak UI, any changes to your package JSON and your code every time you make commits there. But in addition to that, you can also use the sneak VS code extension or an extension for whichever editor that you like to use when you're writing your NPM packages there is a sneak extension that's likely available in that marketplace for that IDE. On that note, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with someone who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding everyone.